Hi, Nick. Rest Hi, it up. Huh? You rest it up? Yes. Good. Uh, when you have a chance uh, with a bye week like that coming in, how much uh, sort of reevaluation have you done in regards to, you know, schematics and play calling and such as the what's worked and not worked so far and and what you might add or increase or add to the playbook going forward yeah we i mean very thorough evaluation of where we're at and um where we've fallen short both as coaches and as players and try to modify and adjust um you know you, you're not reinventing what you've done but certainly willing to modify what you've done obviously we haven't had the success that we're capable of and so you spend a lot of time, you know, reflecting, evaluating, um, looking for ways to improve, looking ways for ways to coach better, to allow our players to play more confidently, faster, um, and allow them to, um, you know, be the players that we know that they are. So there was a lot of that, both schematically, situationally, play calling, you name it, we evaluated it all. So um, spent a good portion of the time throughout last week doing that. Um, while also preparing for Michigan State. I recognize you're probably not going to share X's and O's wise what works for Jack or what makes Jack most comfortable, but especially given that he's already got a lot of time on task, you know, he was a starting quarterback for a portion of last season. He spent a lot of the offseason kind of his de facto QB1. Is the bye week well timed in maybe getting him prepared if you need him in terms of being able to have a lot of that time to just come in and be intensive and, and maybe conceptual, I guess? in some ways with him in terms of saying, you know, okay, let's let's just really sit down and dive deep into what's going to work for you. Yeah, I think you, you have those conversations with all your quarterbacks throughout the year, um, both in training camp, spring practice. Um, and so certainly each quarterback likes certain concepts better or worse than others. And so I think that communication happens more regularly than you think. Um, but, you know, as far as repetitions in practice and those types of things, I think things reveal themselves to you. Um, but we try to cater to whoever's playing quarterback, um, you know, to try to run the plays that they feel most comfortable with and that we feel like gives them the best opportunity to be successful and get first downs and score points. So, you know, and that goes for every position, you know, not just the quarterback. You know, if you have different runners in the game, you have different wideouts in the game, different linemen in the game, you're trying to run the plays that they are most confident in and they feel that they can execute at a high level. So I think that would go with any position, certainly the quarterback gets a lot of attention regarding that. But, um, you know, I think a lot of quarterbacks, there's more similarities than differences, but certainly there are some differences, and you're trying to cater to that. Hey, Coach, what do you feel with Jack Tuttle? What are the top three or four things that stand out to you as far as qualities he has that can help you guys win Big Ten games? Well, I think just Jack's preparation, um, his work ethic, um, you know, as, as good as I've been around. You know, I would start there. I, I certainly think he has the physical ability and tools to be a successful quarterback. He's shown that in our conference. Um, but I, I would just say that his work ethic and preparation um, is as good as I've been around. And so that gives you confidence as a coach that he'll be prepared and ready to go. Is there anything that, that you want to see more out of the offensive line that has maybe disappointed you to this point in the, in the season? Just what, what do you want to see out of that group going forward? I would say, and not just the offensive line, you know, just the unit as a whole has been inconsistent and we haven't produced good enough, you know, and the person that's most responsible for that is me, not the players. And so, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of quality players in that room that can play better. Um, and that's my job to make sure that we're allowing for that, you know, whether it be the schemes, the teaching, um, the preparation as a staff throughout the week to give them the confidence to play to, the, to their capabilities, which I think there's a lot more for that group, um, a lot more that they're capable of. And that's my responsibility. It's not theirs. Um, you know, so we gotta, we got to put them in better positions throughout the week of preparation to give them the confidence so that they can um, play up to their capabilities, which I think they, can, they have shown at times to play really well. Um, you know, they just have been inconsistent, like, our whole group has, and that's not their fault. That's not on the players. That's on me. And um, so we're, we're hunting that. We're searching that. We're trying to get them to feel confident um, so that they can let it rip. And um, I think when they've done that, they've done a nice job. You know, I thought there were runs in the game on Saturday where they did a good job, you know, um, where they were hats on hats. They were moving guys. They were playing with toughness, with effort. You know, we had positive runs. 
Um, we just need to be more consistent, and that's my fault, and that's my responsibility, and so we're looking to, to make that better. Just following up on the uh, running backs again, this, with all the injuries you've had now and transfers and just all the shakeup in that running back room, you have your starter, but what, what's your plan after Stephen Carr? How do the how do how do you guys see you balance plan to like balance carries between Carr and everyone else and try to work in David Holloman, Trent Howland when he's when he's ready and guys like that into the offense? Yeah, your point's well taken there. Um, it has been certainly a little bit of a shakeup, but we have quality players in that room. You know, uh, Irv and and Chris. Two freshmen, Trent and David. I mean, those guys got to step up, and it'll be a little bit by committee after Steven. Um, all those guys are well coached and well prepared. They all have different strengths. And so, you know, between myself and Coach McCullough, just balancing that out, making sure those guys are prepared and ready to go, we're going to need them all. You know, um, you know, the room looks certainly different now than it did at the start of camp. But um, those guys are quality players and capable, and we got to just make sure that we put them in good positions and that they're ready to go. Coach, I guess, you know, even though he's the backup, what excites you as a play caller for Jack Tuttle? Like, does that open up more opportunities, less opportunities? I guess, what, what's the, your mindset heading into this week with his talent and what he's able to do? I'm just, a, you know, for, for any player that gets opportunities to play, whether it's at quarterback or other positions, you know, um, I just, you know, that position particularly, there's only one person that takes a snap. Other positions get an opportunity to rotate and play, even if you're not the starter. So, um you know, regardless of what happens by the time we get to kick off on who's taking the snap, you know, I'm excited for anybody that gets a chance to play quarterback at this school in this conference. And um, whether it's Mike, Jack, Donovan, you know, Grant, Will, Zach, any, Dexter, any of the guys in our room, you know, I just think playing college football is a special thing. Um, obviously, to this point, we haven't played well. And I know that's not over, you know, no one's, um, it hasn't been as an enjoyable of an experience as you'd like. But it's great, you know, it's a blessing. You get to play college football in the Big Ten at this school. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. There's a lot of kids out there that don't get that opportunity. You know, they don't get to play quarterback at this level um, or line at this level or running back or wide out or tight end, you name it. And so I just want the guys to enjoy it. You know, I want them to, to feel blessed and excited about the competition, about the challenge, um, about the adversity when you face it. And I want them to enjoy their experience as college football players. And so um, that's what I hope for all the players, not just the quarterbacks, not just offensive players. You know, I hope, I hope the boys are able to look back on their college career fondly and, and excited about just the opportunities that they were blessed to have. So that's what I would, that's how I'd answer that. Hey coach, the biggest question I got during the bye week was, does IU need more creativity and more things like that, explosive plays on offense? Coach Allen mentioned maybe it's more about execution, but what are your thoughts? Do you guys need more creativity? Do you need more of those kind of things, or how do you see it? Yeah, I think it's, you know, um, I just haven't done a good enough job. So I, I don't want to stand up here and, and uh, you know, make excuses. I think it's easy to say that the creativity is not there when the plays aren't working, you know. That's, that's an easy thing to say, but also maybe a fair thing to say. You know, there's a reason why the execution isn't where it's at. And whether it is the scheme's too predictable, that may be a factor. And we look at that. You know, we sit there and say, you know, are we too predictable? You know, does the other, other team know what we're doing? And if that's the case, then you got to put your players in better position. There's also times where we feel like we're just not executing it, it well enough. And that's also the coach's job. So you look at all that, you know, and the criticism that's, you know, until we produce better, I mean, all those things are being evaluated and worth discussion, no doubt. Um, I think it's always about the execution. It's just, are you making it easier for the players? You know, is the creativity allowing for an easier path to execute, you know? Um, you got to judge that. You got to make those decisions as a staff. You know, you can run different styles of plays, different misdirections, but if it confuses your own players, then that's not beneficial either. You know, so I think all those those uh, discussions are had on a weekly basis. Um, you know, we're certainly trying to keep the defense off balance, um, but certainly the production hasn't been what we need it to be, and that's my job. And I haven't done a good enough job of that. Um, and we're searching for every answer possible to allow our players to have the success that I know that they're capable of. So whether it's misdirection or different types of plays or, 
you name it, you know. Um, it's still, when you call those types of plays, you still got to execute it. You know, you still got to, you know, if you run a reverse, you got to make sure that you hand it off properly or block the right guy, on the, whatever it may be. So um, all those conversations are had, um, and certainly I got to do a better job for our players. Uh, Coach, Coach Allen had made mention that this Michigan State team, they're pretty adept at bending but not breaking. They give up a lot of yards, but they don't give up a lot of points. What to you is going to be the key for you guys to break them, to get those, those points on the board and not just rack up a big yardage game, but, not, but points as well? Yeah, I think, I mean, the game ultimately comes down to points. I know you guys understand that. You know, and I, I look back at our opportunities this year. Um, we have missed some opportunities to score more points, you know, um, in – in the three games that we have lost, certainly that was a factor. You know, um, you point to Iowa. You know, we had two drives where we were in the red area and we didn't we didn't score touchdowns. Right? You know, you do that; those games are different. Um, despite you know how much we turned the ball over in that game against Cincinnati, the turnovers and the lack of points happened collectively. You know, we turned the ball over or got stopped on fourth downs in the red area three times. So there's no doubt that when you're playing good teams, even last week, you know, we get stuck. We, we don't convert a fourth down inside the 10. Um, you know, we miss a one-on-one -on -one opportunity inside the 20, and we throw a pick on the 15, whatever it may be, right? Those are all opportunities for points. And when you're playing good people, you got to execute better and take advantage of those opportunities. So I think to Coach's point, you know, good defenses do that. You know, they, they may give up some yards. They may allow for you to get into the red area. But when you get down there, you got to score touchdowns. And if you do, then you're certainly in a more competitive game, you know. And that has definitely been a factor for our group, um, just not being able to finish drives when those opportunities have presented themselves. Um, you know, we haven't done a good enough job in the games that we've lost as far as just converting those field positions into points, into touchdowns. You know, we've settled for too many field goals. We've turned the ball over too much in the red area. Um, and we haven't converted touchdowns. And I think, you know, that's going to be a factor in every game when you're playing against good defenses. And certainly this week will be no different. Nick, uh, during fall camp and even in the last week or two, a lot of the players have mentioned that, uh, you know, that they have – always have had full faith and confidence in Jack. And even though he's not the everyday starting quarterback, what is it about his personality and work ethic that, that allows him to have such confidence of his teammates in the room that when he has to go in there that they're all behind him 100% and know that he'll do well? Yeah, I think you mentioned just his work ethic. I think, you know, that's the easiest way to gain the trust of your teammates. You know, show them how much you care by how hard you work. And there's not a guy that works harder in our program than Jack Tuttle. And so I think that's a, a great foundation. And I think he takes the time to, sh to show the other players that he does care about them through conversations, through work, through grabbing guys extra. And so um, Jack's certainly done a great job of that. You know, I just think he's – He's been a great teammate since the day he got here. You know, both of his parents have done a fantastic job raising him um, to really care about others. You know, I think he he truly does. You know, he cares about his team. He cares about his teammates. Um, you know, he wants to do well for them, and he works that way. And so he's earned that, and it's no surprise to hear that his teammates would 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 share that with you. So, um, you know, he he's just earned that by how he's worked and how he's cared about the guys around him. Okay, thanks guys.